Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. A Palestinian man armed with a knife stabbed and wounded early this morning two Israeli border policemen in Jerusalem's old city. A Jordanian soldier who was convicted of killing seven Israeli schoolgirls some two decades ago has been released from prison after serving a sentence, a move condemned by Israel. The United States has deployed military vehicles and troops near the northern Syrian city of Manbij in an attempt to prevent tensions from escalating between Turkey and US-backed Kurdish forces. A Palestinian man armed with a knife stabbed and wounded early this morning to Israeli border policemen in Jerusalem's old city. The attacker, a resident of the East Jerusalem neighborhood of Jabal Mukabir, reportedly entered a police post in the ancient city's Lions Gate when he drew a knife and stabbed the two Israeli officers. One of the border policemen managed to get out of the post, aim his gun and shoot at the assailant, who was immediately killed. סמוך לשער בה מגיע מחבל לכיוון שער הערעיות. בשלב מסוים נכנס בריצה לתוך נקודת המשטרה במקום. מחל שם מאבק עם השוטרים אשר בסופו של תהליך מנטרלים אותו. מדובר בפעילות מהירה, נחושה, שהבילה לנטרול האירוע ומניעת המשך פגיעה באחרים. בסך הכוח אנחנו מדברים שעות בוקר מוקדמות לפני התפילות, עדיין הערנות של השוטרים והתגובה המהירה הביאה לנטרול של אותו מחבל. The border policemen were reportedly in light to moderate condition and were taken to Jerusalem Hadassah Medical Center for treatment. Police spokesman Miki Rosenfeld told TV7 that police have launched an investigation into the incident and have detained four suspects from the terrorists' neighborhood as a result. The attack comes as Israel celebrates the Jewish holiday of Purim under heightened security with carnival-like parades across the country. In the Tel Aviv suburb city of Cholon, several hundred spectators in colorful costumes watch the annual parade featuring cartoons and animal floats. Some of the parade floats carry sculptures of famous political figures such as Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu and his wife Sarah, as well as a giant statue of US President Donald Trump, which was created based on a metaphor of the novel Gulliver's Travels. Also in the West Bank, Jewish settlers located inside the divided city of Hebron celebrated the Jewish holiday. Dressed in colorful costumes, the settlers danced through the streets of the ancient city, where the cave of the Paltriaus is located, the place that according to the Bible is the burial place of Abraham and his wife Sarah. Now in other news, a Jordanian soldier was convicted of killing seven Israeli schoolgirls some two decades ago has been released from prison after serving his sentence. Family members of the victims leveled harsh criticism at his release, saying that the family members of the murderer, Ahmad Akamse, received him with festivities, praising the man who committed the heinous crime. The incident took place on March 13, 1997, during an Israeli school field trip in the border area in Jordan. The Jordanian soldier, who was stationed at the scene, opened fire at the group of Israeli school children, killing seven of them, before other Jordanian soldiers seized him and rushed to help the victims. A five-member Jordanian military tribunal found Corporal Dakamse guilty of murder. He would have faced the death penalty, but the tribunal said Dakamse was mentally unstable and was sentenced to life in prison, which is equivalent to 20 years under Jordanian law. One of the survivors of the attack, Keren Mizrahi, said he wasn't punished enough. <laughs> ואני חושבת שהוא היה צריך לקבל הרבה יותר ולא לצאת בחגיגות כאלה. זה לא... זה לא... הוא לא ריצה את העונש שלו, לדעתי.
זה לא מספק לא אותי ולא את המשפחות ולא את זכר החברות שלי. ידענו שהוא הולך להשתחרר, אבל uh, uh, אף פעם אתה לא מוכן באמת. וקשה, זה, בהרגשה שלי זה, זה פציעה מחדש, נפשית ופיזית. Israeli officials condemned the release of Dakamse, saying that Jordan was making a serious mistake by allowing a terrorist to go free, as well as allowing his family and friends to celebrate his release. Meanwhile, the mother of Ahmed Dakamse said she was thankful for her son's release, while praising all those who supported her son and family during his incarceration. <laughs> ولا بيده نصيب كتب علينا الجميع الحمد لله بارك الله باللي وقف معانا من أولها لآخره أحمد أكامسا is now in his family home which is located near the city of Irbid in northern Jordan Akamse, who became a hero to a strong opposition movement in Jordan, led by the Islamists and nationalists who vehemently opposed the country's peace treaty with Israel, which was signed in 1994, said upon his release that he expected the Hashemite kingdom to reconsider its peace treaty with the Jewish state, while calling on his fellow countrymen to get rid of the Israelis, whom he said have no humanity. Now with regard to the ongoing conflict in Israel's northern neighbor, the United States has deployed military vehicles and troops near the northern city of Manbaj in an attempt to prevent tensions escalating between Turkey and U.S.-backed Syrian Kurdish militias, both of which are fighting against the Islamic State yet view each other as enemies. The move comes as the U.S.-led coalition is currently backing a campaign by its Syrian militia allies to encircle and ultimately capture the city of Raqqa, the de facto capital of the Islamic State in Syria. The area around Manbaj has been controlled since last year by the Manbaj Military Council, a local militia that is a part of the Syrian Democratic Forces, an umbrella organization of armed groups of which the Kurdish YPG militia is also a part of. An official statement released by Washington said that the United States aims to prevent any clashes or skirmishes between the Manbaj Military Council and Turkey's Euphrates Shield Operation, who views the rise of Kurdish power in northern Syria with alarm. Turkey considers the Syrian city of Manbaj as part of the safe zone it wants to create on its southern borders to the elimination of the Kurdish YPG militia, which it considers a hostile terrorist group. Meanwhile, the U.S. military deployment in the city of Manbaj has prompted a Russian response in which it deployed its own troops in the city of Jeb el Khamra, located a few kilometers west of Manbaj. The Russian troops stationed there are currently operating alongside forces of Syrian President Bashar Assad. Damascus released a statement following the American military deployment, accusing Washington of invading its country because it entered without Assad's permission. Thank you for watching us. You can also watch us at tv7israelnews.com or tv7.fi. For any comments, please send your emails to israelnews at tv7.fi. For more updates from Israel and the region, please join our Facebook page at TV7 Israel News. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. Jonathan Hassan, Ebe Erev Tov and Shavua Tov. We will see you again tomorrow at the same time. In order to donate to TV7 Israel News, please follow these simple steps.
first press the Donate logo, located at the bottom left side of TV7 Israel News Facebook page, or on the Donate tab at the head of the page. Then insert the amount you'd like to donate, and fill in your credit card information. Just like this. And press Review Donation and Continue. After reviewing your donation details, please press Donate to finalize your donation. That's it! Your donation is now complete, and an email with your donation details has been sent to your email address. You can also print your donation receipt by pressing the link here. Thank you for supporting TV7 Israel News.